Ugandan patriot and freedom fighter Honorable Robert Changulanyi, yeah, better known as Bobby Wine, finally appeared in public today, 23rd August 2018. It started with perhaps one of the most public yeah, court marshals seen in these shores for very many decades. You know, a military trial can never be like a civilian one. You know, to the military, the world over, civilians are lesser beings. And therefore, court marshals ordinarily have very limited access for people who do not belong to the military. Now, in a minute, we shall analyze what the end game is here, yeah? why this was allowed. Because obviously what happened in this case is what we refer to in Kenya, yeah, an increasingly popular phrase, orders from above. Now it is extremely important yeah, to read between the lines and to understand why these uh, extraordinary orders from above uh, came into play in this case. And we shall do that in a minute. For now, just hold on to that thought. Now, Bobby Wine put up a very brief face. But this vibrant, very active young man, yeah, was definitely not his usual self. Yeah, the man is definitely sick. Very sick. For starters, he can't walk by himself. He needs to lean on a cane and to be heavily supported by several people. However, the despot, yeah, masquerading as a popularly elected president, a man called Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, has told us that it's fake news he was tortured. And so, taking that lead, I'm probably spreading fake news by saying the man can hardly walk. Or perhaps the brutal Kampala regime will tell us he was pretending. The slain American president, John Fitzgerald Kennedy, once famously said, you can fool some people all the time. Others, you can fool some time. But you cannot fool all the people all the time. And in this case, the truth is there for the entire world to see it. Fake news notwithstanding. Bobby Wine has been harmed. Bobby Wine has been tortured. Bobby Wine is not okay. Now, the military court in Gulu swiftly released Bobby Wine. And this great patriot of Uganda yeah, was a free man shortly after 11.21 a.m. East African time. However, his freedom was very short-lived because soon thereafter, he was rearrested yeah, on orders from the Criminal Investigations and Intelligence Directorate, CIID. He was then swiftly arraigned before a magistrate's court and charged with others, yeah, such a long list, that uh, the magistrate had to take over three minutes reading all the names, yeah, plus others still at large for treason. The charge sheet says that uh, Bobby Wine, along with others, organized and executed the stoning of the president's limousine. Yeah, with the intention of doing harm to the president of Uganda. Yeah, and therefore the charge is treason, which is a capital offense. Now, a magistrate's court cannot try a capital offense. Yeah, and therefore Bobby Wine could not even take a plea. Now, let's analyze what is happening here. Let's just stop for a minute and analyze what is really going on here. In one sentence, the whole idea. The whole objective was to process Bobby Wine out of a court martial into the civilian court system. Now, there are only two possibilities here. One, either somebody is trying to correct a mistake they made, yeah, or two, a plan that failed or that a plan that is seen to be failing has been adjusted. Yeah, a plan B has been put into motion. Only those two possibilities. Now, in the first place, it does not make any sense for a civilian to be court-martialed. Yeah? How do you put a civilian in a military court? 
unless of course a country is under military rule yeah being governed by military law those who know Seveni well may want to say that it's a message from the president yeah that if you try him yeah he can return the country into military law or if he's defeated politically he rushes back to military law yeah because it's military rule it's military law that brought him into power in the first place in Uganda he went to the bush fought and forcefully took over a democratically elected government this is precisely the truth and as they say you cannot teach an old dog new tricks other keen analysts of the Ugandan political situation say that the whole idea was to get him to a court martial yeah try him in secrecy and get rid of him murder him in other words murder bobby wine using a military legal system now there are many advantages here for a brutal dictator and despot yeah because you can hang somebody yeah or kill him by firing squad without uh, the public closely scrutinizing the reasons why the trial is held in secrecy with very limited access from uh, civilians now if indeed this was the plan it can't work now why because the whole world's attention has shifted and is focused on Uganda and focused on Bobby Wine indeed now as i make this recording there are very many places on this planet where people have no idea where Uganda is but they know who Bobby Wine is now quickly coming back to my initial point yeah where i was discussing about why all of a sudden this court martial was so open with access to anybody and everybody as a result of orders from above orders from the commander in chief the person commanding the military and of course the president of uganda the whole idea is to tell the world a lie that lie is that bobby wine is getting a free and fair trial even the court martial is open yeah the lie father goes on to tell us that uganda is a very open system mseveni is a very open person very fair person now why is this a lie well there's very strong evidence to suggest that the guns were planted on bobby wine yeah in the initial charge uh, against him because you'll remember initially he was charged for being in possession of firearms now we've already gone through that in an earlier recording on this channel yeah it's not possible to carry a sewing needle into a hotel in Uganda without uh, the hotel knowing let alone a gun because of the threat of terrorism everybody is thoroughly searched you cannot walk into a hotel with a bag of any size yeah that will not attract the attention of the hotel security to know exactly what is inside that bag that is why it's very interesting that as we speak that charge has vanished into thin air and so it would appear that the state the evil state led by Yoweri Kaguta Museveni has no option but to go back to the drawing boards and fabricate and invent and create new charges and new evidence it is super fascinating that the state is not interested in uh, catching up yeah and arresting the person who shot Bobby Wine's driver dead especially because the same state claims that the people responsible are opposition people Besinje people who are very jealous about Bobby Wine because common sense tells you if you are really interested in security and security alone yeah you should be much more interested in somebody who had a gun and actually killed somebody with it than in people who threw stones allegedly threw stones because to date we don't have the exhibit of that limousine which had a, a, a stone that was thrown towards it a stone that penetrated a back windscreen yeah and then also swallowed the broken glass <laughs> Now of great interest to us should be the strategy of Bobby Wine's legal team. They have been very very consistent in demanding immediate 
medical attention. For Bobby Wine, the lawyers have told us that very strong painkillers have been used, yeah, and he was massaged in the face and so many other things done to get rid of the swellings. To get rid of the horrifying signs of torture that others have seen, those who visited him when he was in custody earlier. Now modern medicine yeah, can do miracles when it comes to disguising a person's actual condition. Modern medicine can indeed get rid of swellings in minutes without using any massage. Fatal pain can be numbed, yeah, reduced to something in you know, a fraction of what it actually should be. Because pain is good in that it is a warning signal. Yeah, it is a warning that uh, there's something very wrong in the body. However, even with all the wonders of modern medicine, Museveni goons could not get Bobby Wine to walk properly. On his own, yeah, and that is very telling. Indeed, it is extremely alarming. Now, the magistrate ordered full access, full medical access to Bobby Wine by his private doctors and access to any other medical facilities outside the prison system in Uganda. That was a court order. But hey, this is Africa. Court orders don't mean anything. What matters are orders from above. And so, it remains to be seen whether indeed Bobby Wine will have access, full access, to all the urgent medical attention he obviously needs. Now, let's look at the politics. Now, I don't know if the draconian dictatorial leadership of Yoweri Museveni realizes this. I don't think they do. Yeah, what am I talking about? What I am saying they do not realize is the fact, a yeah, very obvious fact, that the longer Bobby Wine remains incarcerated, yeah, the more powerful he becomes politically. What the Kampala regime is actually doing is that they are feeding, nurturing, and indeed rapidly building up a political monster that will wipe them out. Just the other day, Bobby Wine was simply the Chandondo East legislator, yeah, a former musician, and admittedly, although it was clear that he was gaining political influence in the country, to many, he was just a young man who had recently gotten into politics and probably did not have his ducks in a row. Many very influential people outside Uganda did not know Bobby Wine and were not interested in knowing him. But thanks to Museveni and an emotional plan to teach him a lesson, in their own words as they said, a plan that has obviously gone terribly wrong, Bobby Wine is today a political giant inside and outside Uganda. He is a rallying force that is shaking the country called Uganda right down to its foundations. Talking political strategy, if I was Museveni, what I'd have done would have been to release Bobby Wine, make sure all the attention is focused away from him as soon as possible, and I would have looked for other ways to deal with his growing political influence before it is too late. However, what Museveni has done is to hold a snake, a dangerous, poisonous snake, by the tail. He thinks he has the head of the snake, but what actually is holding is the tail, and the head is free to roam, yeah, and to look where to strike next. And mark my words, the next strike by that snake is going to be fatal. Fatal to the regime of Yoweri Kaguta Seveni. I know how Seveni thinks. Yeah, he's telling himself, Ugandans can make a lot of noise but they can hardly do anything about anything. They are very laid-back people. Yeah, they're not like Kenyans. They will just talk, talk, talk and do nothing about it. Now it is true, Museveni understands Ugandans very well. That is why he has remained in power for over 32 years. However, I cannot help but remember a recent case where a woman 
had the same thinking about her husband and she was giving that which should be given only to husband to other men saying that she knows her husband very well he is very cool he'll not do anything well for knowing her husband she ended up dead six feet under her lover as well and her husband is fighting for his life after a failed suicide attempt and she was right she knew her husband very well that lived together for very many years she was right she was dead right and so it is absolutely true that your weary kagutam seveni knows ugandans indeed he understands ugandans until next time this is chris kumekucha